Hello there, friends. It's Miss Stephanie from the Chester Public Library back with another story time. We're going to jump right in with a story about nature. This one's called Over and Under the Pond by Kate Messner with art by Christopher Silas Neal. Over and Under the Pond. Where's Over? Over's up top here. And where's under? Under is down here. So over and under the pond. Over the pond we slide, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. The water's a mirror reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask? Under the pond, Mom says. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them now. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles loop and twirl, skaters on a warm summer surface. Onto the pond, minnows dart through, waving forests of grass, while a brook trout lurks, ready to lunge. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull, past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. One, two, three. They slip off and away. Splash, gurgle, sploosh, under the pond. Over the pond, cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close. Red-winged blackbirds race by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddish, a caddisfly larva builds a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water, water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails, growing legs, growing up. Over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, a great blue heron stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long-legged step. And strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. Over the pond we drift, heads tipped up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. It's our woodpecker. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. 
Under the pond, dragonfly larva watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster bass jaws. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears in the dark. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, right up onto shore as a far off loon calls good night. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond, the prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crayfish and tadpoles turned frogs, wading herons and stalking raccoons. and the hidden world under the pond. All right, that was over and under the pond. We learned a lot about different animals and creatures and what they do out in nature. All right, let's do the itsy bitsy spider today. Get those fingers ready. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. Let's do it again and let's change our actions this time to mix it up. So you can do it this way or you can do it this way. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. All right, book number two today. This book is called Just Because by Mac Barnett, illustrated by Isabel Arsenault. This book is about asking questions. There are lots of different types of questions. You can ask, what is that? You can ask, where are we going? You can ask, how did it get there? You can ask, who is coming over for dinner? You can ask, let's see some more questions in here. Who, what, where, how, why? Questions, those are some of our question starters. So let's see what kind of questions we have in this book. It's always good to ask questions so you can learn more. And we're gonna learn in this book that sometimes we ask a lot of questions just because. Why is the ocean blue? Every night when you go to sleep, the fish take out guitars. Sing sad songs and cry blue tears. What is the rain? The tears of flying fish. Why do the leaves change color? In autumn, when the world gets colder, the trees keep warm by setting quiet little fires in their leaves. By winter, their branches have all burnt up. Why do birds fly south for the winter? To fetch new leaves for trees. happened to the dinosaurs? Millions of years ago, thousands of asteroids fell on the Earth. But the dinosaurs had planned for this. They fastened themselves to big balloons, floated up to space, and stayed there. What are black holes?
the mouths of dinosaurs. What's a volcano? How do you tame a horse? How big was a woolly mammoth? What's an echo? How were the pyramids built? What are freckles? How tall is the tallest mountain? Why do we sneeze? What is the moon? What's a rainbow? How does the egg become a chicken? What is lightning? What is thunder? What is a desert? What is the wind? <sighs> so many questions. It is time to go to sleep. Why do we have to sleep? Because sometimes there are some things we can only see with our eyes closed. fun little book about asking questions. I bet you all have lots of questions and I'm sure you ask them to the grown-ups in your life all the time. And grown-ups, I bet sometimes you don't always know the answer and that's okay. We like questions because we like finding out new information and learning things. All right, we're gonna do one more song before our last book or we can uh, shake our sillies out today. Are you ready? We're gonna shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake, shake our sillies out. Shake, shake. Shake our sillies out, wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna clap, clap, clap our clappies out, clap, clap, clap our clappies out, clap, clap, clap our clappies out, wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna touch, touch, touch our touchies out, touch, touch, touch our touchies out, touch, touch, touch our touchies out, wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna pat, pat, pat our patties out, pat, pat. Pat our patties out, pat, pat, pat our patties out, wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna stretch, stretch, stretch our stretches out, stretch, stretch, stretch our stretches out, stretch, stretch, stretch our stretches out, wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna yawn, yawn, yawn our yawnies out, yawn, yawn, yawn our yawnies out, yawn, yawn, yawn our yawnies out, wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna shout, shout, shout our shouties out, shout, shout, shout our shouties out, shout, shout, shout our shouties out, wiggle our waggles away. We're gonna shake, shake, shake our sillies out, shake, shake, shake our sillies out, shake, shake. Shake our sillies out, wiggle our waggles away. All right, we're nice and shaky out for our last book. Millie Fierce. I bet she shakes her sillies out. This is Millie Fierce by Jane Manning. Do we know what fierce means? Hmm, look at Millie's face. What do we think fierce means? She looks a little bit maybe angry but I think she is just proud that she's tough. Fierce usually means tough. So Millie Fierce, let's find out why she's called that. Millie Fierce. Millie was too short to be tall, too quiet to be loud, and too plain to be fancy. When she spoke at show and tell, hardly anyone listened. When she walked into a room, hardly anyone looked up. And when there was cake to dish out, Millie never got anything better than a small, simple piece. One day, Millie was drawing sidewalk pictures. She had just finished a flower. It was a little bit crooked, but it was the best flower she had ever drawn. All at once, three girls from school marched past her as if she wasn't there. They walked all over her flower and over it and over it until it was nothing more than a big multicolored smudge. Millie sat there long after the girls had passed. She looked at the smudge. That's me, she said. Millie was tired of feeling like a smudge. She didn't like it. Not one bit. A new feeling rumbled inside her. Millie stood. I'm not a smudge, she said. So loudly it surprised her. That's when Millie became fierce. 
Millie frizzed out her hair and made the crazy eye. She looked in the mirror and growled. Look at me and my ferocity, she yelled. Grandpa Irwin, or Grandpa Edwin noticed. She stomped around in Grandpa's noisy boots, even though it made her toes tingle. And she filed each of her nails to a tiny point. They are short, but they are sharp, she said. She scratched them slowly down the chalkboard. The class noticed. For Millie Fierce, no line was too long to barge in front of. No food was too tasty to flick across the table. Now people looked Millie Fierce right in the eye. They were mad and said, shh, with angry faces. But they noticed her. She left muddy handprints on the kitchen wall and painted Buddy's face bright blue. Watch out, I bite, she howled like a mad thing. The moon noticed. Little by little, people would sit farther and farther away from her. Millie Fierce noticed that they didn't look at her as much. So she pulled all the buds out of Mrs. Clee's favorite peony and laughed with Mrs. Clee's face turned beet red. She only felt the littlest bit bad about it. At school, during Jackie Raymond's birthday party, Millie Fierce danced on her chair like a monkey, but no one watched her, not even to scowl. So Millie Fierce hid the tail of the donkey. She dumped jelly beans on the floor. Just ignore her, said one of the girls in her class. And everyone did. So Millie Fierce grabbed the biggest, best piece of cake, the one with two roses on it. She knew it was the birthday boy's piece. She took it away anyway. Just before she took the first bite, she looked around to see if anyone was watching her. Everyone was, but no one made a sound. Except Jackie Raymond, who was crying. Millie Fierce hung her wild head. For the first time in her life, she wished she was invisible. That day, Millie walked the long way home. She went up to her room and combed out her hair and filed down her nails. She drew a card for Jackie Raymond with a flower on the outside. I'm sorry and happy birthday. She wrote on the inside and signed it, Millie. She spit shined grandpa's boots and fed Buddy his supper. Everyone noticed. Millie decided she liked being good better than being fierce. Mostly. I like that story. Millie got a little bit naughty in the middle there, didn't she? Did everybody notice when she was doing naughty things? Yeah, but did they notice for the right reasons? I think Millie learned that it's better to be noticed for doing good, nice things than to be doing fierce, naughty things. It was probably fun being fierce for a little while, but not when everybody started getting mad at her. That was probably not a good feeling. So now we know why Millie looks fierce. All right, my friends, that's it for us today. Thanks for joining me. I hope you liked our stories. Hope to see you next time. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you around.